Hello everyone, it's Diego Doom here. Today I'm bringing you another vlog. In today's vlog, we'll talk about the value of keeping your boxes, and also I'm going to show you where I store my boxes. So what's the value in keeping your box? I strongly urge everyone to hold onto their boxes if they have the space for them. For me personally, I have three main reasons why I like to hold on to my boxes. The first reason, having the box is also a part of collecting or picking up an item, so if you have a figure without a box, to me personally, I think it's kind of incomplete. The second reason to hold onto your box, it's a means to store your accessories. Some figures come with a ton of accessories, and it'd be very hard to keep up with them if you have to store your accessories in a simple sandwich bag or something like that, so I would always rather hold onto the box and place them nice and neat in a very cool clamshell. The third reason to hold onto your boxes is for the box art. A lot of the box art has some absolutely fantastic artistic representations of the figure, as well as some very cool promo photos, so I honestly feel like it's a waste to throw that away. Now guys, let's go upstairs. I'm gonna show you how I store my boxes and also I'm gonna pull out a couple examples of some very cool box art, which will hopefully encourage you to hold on to your boxes. So now, let's go upstairs. Okay guys, we've made it upstairs. Let's go ahead and turn on our light and we'll see what's behind door number one. As we step in here, we see a very nice, large, open, empty room here. We're trying to focus everything. Let me give you a quick rundown about this room. This room is actually going to be my future reviewing slash collecting space. Since the Bachelor at Larva review, I actually ran out of space in my office downstairs and now I'm going to have to migrate my collection up here into this nice large room. So I'm very excited about it. I will be sure to make a vlog out of it. It should be pretty cool. So the first thing you'll notice, we have a bunch of boxes over here. So let's run over here and see what's going on. These boxes are full of other boxes. So what is actually in these? These boxes are actually full of our Tomashi web exclusive shipping cartons. For those of you who do not know, anytime you buy a Tomashi web exclusive figure, it typically comes inside of this very nice shipping card and it's branded specifically for your figure. Now I know most people simply just toss out these shipping cards that don't see any value in them. For me personally, I think you should keep your shipping cards because it's a part of the total package of having a figure. If I was in the market for a secondhand figure and it was a Tom Machine Web exclusive and it didn't come with a shipping carton, then I would not be apt to pay a high price for it. So let's look in here and see what we got. First up, we have the Godzilla 1964 figure. Just gotta make sure that's all in focus. Um, next we have, this is the dynamic option part set. This is for Mazen Kaiser and Shin Getter 1. Let's see what else we got here. We have, what is this? This is the 1964 emergence version Godzilla figure. And here for the smaller one, a figure arts exclusive. This is Kikaider 01. Hopefully that's in focus. And let's see, let's look at one more. This is, whoops, drop that box. And this is Kiru, the heavy arms version, or yep, high mobility set, so pretty cool there. So basically guys, you get the gist. It's a bunch of boxes filled with other boxes, so it's clearly some type of box inception. If we look to our left, just for the fun of it, I do have interest outside of figure collecting. I do play video games, so here we have a large poster of Radiata Stories. I have a small poster here from the original GameCube release of Tales of Symphonius, very cool there. And then also I have the wall scroll slash mini game guide from Onimosha 2. So again, guys, when I do get some free time, I do like to game. Now, if we spin around over here and turn to our right, we'll zoom out, we have door number two. So let's go ahead and step in here and see what's behind door number two. And behind door number two, this is the quote unquote dungeon. This is where I store all of my boxes here, which is definitely very cool. Oh, what's that? We actually have a Trend Master Space Godzilla figure. 
I actually found this as I was moving here, which is pretty cool. Let's see if the sound still works. So it still works after all these years. I bought this figure when I was a very, very, very young kid. Well, I didn't buy it. My parents bought it for me, but still, it's very cool to have an ancient piece of my childhood here. Let's go ahead and start with the SH Figure Arts section of my closet. As you can see, I have a ton of SH Figure Arts figures. Most of these I have not reviewed yet. They are all on my backlog review list, so be on the lookout for the reviews coming very soon. Now to pull out two examples of some pretty cool box art here, we have SH Figure Arts Barnaby Brooks Jr. from Tiger and Bunny, and then Blackbeat from Bee Fighter. So let's go ahead and look at Barnaby's box. As you can see, a very cool box. We have some nice artwork of Barnaby on the front, the figure. On the back, we have some very cool comic style art. On the side, we have the figure, and then on the other side, we have some text. Now, typically, I like to store my figures kind of out with the, we'll say, spine facing, so that way, if I come in this closet and I'm looking for a particular figure's accessories, I can reach them and go, oh, it's right here, and tip it right on out just on visual versus looking at, you know, the text like I have Agito up here. Like, so we need to spin that around or never mind. There's no text on the other side either. So I like to have them with the spines out for the most part. Now for Black Beats box, I really do enjoy this box. A sinister character deserves a sinister box. A very cool box here with the figure with a nice pose on the front. On the back, we have the purple lightning and all the other dynamic poses, which is definitely very cool. So some very nice box art going on. Now, something else to know for those of you who do not know, anytime you're ordering a Tomshi product, if it is an open window, like Barnaby's box, that means it is a regular release. And then if it's a completely sealed up box, like Black Beat, that means it was a web exclusive. So if you're out here shopping for figures and you catch a figure that might have a open window when it shouldn't, then you might have a bootleg. Stepping over to the left, I have my Figma section here. Please excuse the focus. As you can see, I have Tech Man Evil, Guyver 1, Guyver 1, and Tech Man Blade. Guyver 1, two solid snakes, Samus, and Link. Now, I bought three Figma Guyver 1s in an effort to fully and absolutely support the Figma line as they went down the Guyver franchise. I was hoping the more that are bought, the more likely they are to continue down the Guyver franchise line. It looks like they are, since we have the Figma Guyver 2F coming out in November, I think, which is definitely very cool. Now the Figma boxes are normally very nice. We have on the back, this is Tech Man Blade's box. Excuse that glare so we can keep this all in focus and maybe zoom in some. But Tech Man Blade's box, definitely very cool. Very cool promo photos. The box has a very nice glossy finish. On the side, a very nice image of Tech Man Blade. On the front, a nice open window. Just as a whole, a very nice box. Now as we move further to the left, this is my Sentinel section, which is definitely very cool. And I actually pulled out two examples, some very nice box arts. Let's go ahead and look down here. So first up, we have the re-edit Iron Man Extremist Armor box. As you can see, very nice schematic of Iron Man and his Extremist Armor, it's definitely very cool. The box is a very nice premium feel. When we open the box, we have a very nice large window with the accessories stored inside. And then on the left inside cover, you can see we have an absolutely fantastic illustration of Iron Man. And that's just the thing. This is so cool and I couldn't imagine just tossing this box in the trash. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff with these boxes here. Next coming down, we have the box for one of the top 10 figures of 2016. This is the box for the 12 inch Heroes Meister Ultraman manga version figure. Absolutely fantastic box. A very cool illustration of Ultraman on the front. We have Ultraman and nice glossy text on the side going down here on the back. Some very cool credits. So it's like a Hot Toys box, but again, a very nice solid premium feel. And of course, how could you throw away this very cool art here? It's very nicely done there. Coming back up, let's go ahead and just kind of gently slide this out before we get crushed. We have the Realbot Gurren Logan figure. Look at that cover art, an absolutely fantastic illustration of Gurren Logan, which is definitely very cool. So I really do love the Sentinel boxes, they definitely spare no expense in their packaging. Coming down further to the left, this is the SOC slash SRC section here. So the first example I pulled out, we have the GX52 Getter 1 box. As you can see, very nice artwork of the figure. The box has a very nice glossy finish on the back. A very cool image of Getter 1 using the Getter machine guns, which is definitely very cool. One SRC box I really do enjoy. Let's grab the Gurren Logan figure here. 
as you can see on the front of the box we have this very cool hollow foil effect going on so we can try to get this stable and get things in focus here so a very nice box there definitely very cool the figures pose with all kinds of cool photoshop effects going on on the back very cool poses i mean again just very nice box art Moving down, we have more SOCs and SRCs. We have some S Gokens going on. The Shin Getter 1 S Goken reveal will be coming up very soon. Over there in the back corner, we have the BFC Guyver 3 Murakami. All my BFC figures are back there. Now, their boxes, they're pretty good. There's nothing really to go crazy about, but still, it's nice to have them. And it's also a means to store the accessories. Now, if we move left, to the back wall here we have my massive ultra act collection let's see if we can focus all this as best we possibly can and brighten up this light some so as you can see tons and tons of ultra act figures with the spines facing out all the boxes for the most part they look the same but i do just like the general template design let's go ahead and grab a regular release and a web exclusive so we have ace killer and hunter knights ruby now as i said Web exclusives have a closed box, and then regular releases have an open box. Excuse the silliness going on. So as you can see, they have the same running theme with the kind of beams and sparks going left and right, which is pretty cool. So as a whole, just a nice design. So again, these boxes are definitely very cool. Ace Killer has a nice finish in the back. We have the cool promo photos. Whoops, dropped something there. So very nice there. And we'll kind of look around at these really quick. As you can see, I don't have anything in a particular order. As you see, I have two Hayatas, and that's because one caught a case of the spaghetti legs. And then over here, I have two Noahs because I actually broke the first one. And I think we're gonna pull that one out for a I Break Stuff vlog or something like that. As we come down, we have the Zoffy Mebius set. Over here, we have the Golgotha set. So again, very cool box. Nice promo art on the back, which is definitely very cool as i keep saying and then finally for ultra acts we have the box for one of my most popular ultra act reviews and that is the ultraman dark and ultra 7 dark set which is very cool let's put it on the back very cool promo photos again i mean i just can't bear to throw away this artwork and if you guys have the space i would recommend holding on to your boxes i mean it's a means to store accessories and also a means to keep around some pretty cool art Coming down, we have my vinyl section here. So we have various X Plus figures and then the Kaiju Remix series Bimular here. So as you can see, some very cool boxes, some very nice artwork. But with the X Plus boxes, the 30 centimeter figures are definitely very cool for their box art. But the rest of the box, there's nothing all that interesting about it. And I've noticed that these boxes are taking up way too much space in my closet. I think eventually I'm going to follow suit like other X plus collectors and go ahead and cut off this cover art, frame it, and go ahead and throw away the rest of the box. For the 25 centimeter releases, like this is for the Gamma 96 figure, and then this box down here is actually for the Ultraman appearance pose figure. These boxes are not necessarily specifically branded for one particular figure, so in all honesty, you can actually just toss these in the trash, but I just haven't gotten around to doing that just yet. But let's keep looking down here. We have the G03, the Gamera 99, we have the G89, we've got our Aoshima Shin Getter 1 or New Getter Robo. We have our Kyoto Zerum box there, nothing much to see there. Then at the bottom, this is actually the shipping carton for our Heroes Meister Ultraman. Very nice carton. I'm definitely going to hold on to that. So, you know, it's specifically branded for the figure. So, again, it's part of the total package. At the very bottom, we have the Space Killer, which is the 30 centimeter Bachelor Larva. So very cool box art there. So I think I might have to cut this box up if I'm going to do anything with it. But I think I might leave this box intact. Now coming all the way up and moving to our right, this is where all the good stuff is to most of you guys. And this is where I have all my Monster Arts figures. Also hidden back here are a few other figures. We have the Max Factory, Max Goken Mazenkaiser. We have the SOC Daigengar and Obinsider set. We have the Aoshima General Darkness figure. So as you can see, guys, a lot of very neat box art. So let's go ahead and keep going through here. We have all the SH Monster Arts boxes. So we have the Evolution set here. Check this stuff out. Very nice promo photos of the evolution set again guys how could you up and throw 
this nice art away and plus two it's a means of storing accessories over to the right we have the g64 box we have guy gans box let's go ahead and pull that box out and check out those photos so you can see whoops let's see hopefully nothing falls down here we have guy gans box definitely very cool photos of the actual figure on the front here very nice now as you guys know before they used to use i think it was movie stills or something like that for the covers of the monster arts boxes and then they switched to just stills of the figures but again very cool to have one of the best and most menacing boxes of the sh monster arts line would have to be burning godzilla's box let's look down and see if we can find it and maybe pull it out so it's way 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 down here let's grab this hopefully i'm not crushed Woo! oh no we're good okay check this box out definitely very cool now how could you throw this away and let's go ahead and bring it on home so we'll just kind of look down here at the rest we have our g14 spitfire a mechagodzilla or kiru g14 regular another regular g14 we have our G2K here, that's the original release. Then we have two Gammers here down at the bottom. We've got our Comic-Con Explosion Godzilla, the original 94. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So guys, this is how I store all my boxes. So now that we've gone ahead and went through the air quotes dungeon here, let's go ahead and run back downstairs and conclude this vlog. We're back. So guys, to conclude the vlog, I hope this closet tour really drove the message home in seeing the value of your boxes, why you should hold on to them. Of course, it's a great way to store your accessories, but also, there is a lot of very cool box artwork out there, and in all honesty, it would be a shame just to toss that stuff in the trash. Now, I know not everyone has the space to hold on to their boxes, but I would strongly encourage you to hold on to your more premium boxes, or definitely hold on to the boxes that have some very cool artwork. Well guys, this is it for the vlog. Be sure to leave your collector related question in the comment section of this video. If I can make a vlog out of your question, I'll be sure to give you credit for it. Be sure to like the Facebook fan page, add me on Jimmer, follow me on Instagram, and follow me on Twitter. To see my other vlogs, be sure to click on the playlist link right here. Like, comment, and subscribe.